Though Juul started with the intention of saving lives, it had a recent dispute with the FDA, who claimed that Juul was contributing to a national health epidemic. This led to the removal of thousands of Juul products from shelves all over the country. Despite this, the company still has a $16 billion valuation and pulled in $250 million in revenue in 2017 alone. Though it faces legal difficulties, Juul is clearly the most popular choice for vapors around the world. The San Francisco-based company owns a dominating 71% of the e-cigarette market. But there's more to the story than Juul is revealing to the public. Today we are exploring 10 unsettling facts about Juul. Much like when cigarettes became big business in the 1900s, most people don't know exactly what goes into their Juul pods. The Juul has two components, the e-cigarette, which holds the battery and temperature regulation system, and the pod, which contains e-liquid, made up of nicotine, glycerol, and propylene glycol, benzoic acid, and flavorants, and is inserted into the end of the e-cigarette device. Pods come in a variety of colors and flavors, from cucumber and creme brulee, mango, and tobacco. Juul's starter kit, the e-cigarette, USB charger, and four flavor pods, sells for about $50. If you didn't recognize a lot of the ingredients that comprise a Juul pod, you're not alone. However, according to a study from Johns Hopkins, researchers found that the vapors from a variety of e-devices contain potentially toxic levels of metals, including lead. Additionally, an in-depth review of more than 800 studies on e-cigarettes published by the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine in January determined that most e-cigarette products contain and emit a variety of potentially toxic substances, such as aldehydes and metals. When you insert the pod into its cartridge and inhale through a mouthpiece on the end of the Juul, the device vaporizes the e-liquid. When the device runs out of power, you can insert it into your computer via a USB charger for a reboot. With such a sleek design and enticing flavor options, it's not difficult to see why these devices appeal to more than just older smokers. Depending on the taxes in your area, Juul Ponds usually cost about $15 for a pack of four. That makes them pretty inexpensive, and therefore accessible to kids. When a pack of cigarettes costs $5 to $12 for a single pack, most kids will opt for the Juul. According to the National Youth Tobacco Survey, 20.8% of high school students and 4.9% of middle school students, over 3.6 million kids, were current e-cigarette users in 2018. From 2017 to 2018, e-cigarette use increased by an alarming 78% for high schoolers and 48% for middle schoolers. I don't recall any fad, legal or illegal, catching on in this way, says Meg Kenny the assistant head of school at Burr and Burton Academy in Manchester, Vermont, who has worked in education for 20 years. Students at her school are juuling in bathrooms, in class, and on the bus. Because it's against the school's rules, they hide the devices in ceiling tiles and in their bras and underwear. 95% of the disciplinary infractions we deal with in the fall and continue to deal with into the spring are all connected to the Juul, she added. Juul comes in a variety of flavors, such as fruit medley, mango, cool cucumber, and creme brulee. Flavors in tobacco products, including e-cigarettes, have been proven to appeal to young people. Flavored e-cigarettes are especially dangerous, not only because they attract youth, but because their young users are likely to be misinformed about the harmfulness of the products. So if they're illegal for minors, where are all these kids getting these jewel pots? Truth Initiative surveyed a national sample of more than 1,012 to 17-year-olds in April 2018 and found that nearly three-quarters, 74% of youth said that they obtained jewel at a store or retail outlet. Just over half, 52%, reported that they received jewel from a social source, such as a friend or family member. Although the internet was not the most common way youth obtained Juul, only 6% reported that they received the product through an online transaction. Another feature that sets Juul apart from many of the other e-cigarettes on the market is the nicotine punch it packs. Each pod contains 59 milligrams of nicotine per milliliter of liquid. Juul claims one pod is equal to a pack of cigarettes in terms of nicotine, but tobacco experts say the precise equivalency is difficult to determine because not all the nicotine released in cigarette smoke is inhaled, and some is trapped in the filter. Juul also contains three times the nicotine levels permitted in the European Union, which is why Juul can't be sold there. Juul's creators ramped up the nicotine levels on purpose. They realize many of the e-cigarettes on the market don't hit smokers' systems in a way that's comparable to cigarettes. Typical e-cigarettes have nicotine levels ranging from 6 to 30 milligrams per milliliter. This means that if you're already a cigarette smoker, Juul can be a good alternative, but it will only get you more hopelessly addicted to nicotine. Beyond this, if you've never smoked a tobacco product, Juuls could get you far more addicted than a traditional cigarette ever would. Because one-fifth of high school students actively Juul, their chances of living a life free from nicotine are diminishing by the day. When the makers of Juul first started designing the product in 2015, they talked about the name of the gadget, meant to suggest an object of beauty and to catch on as a verb, as in to Juul. 
While the campaign wasn't targeted specifically at teenagers, a former senior manager said that he and others in the company were well aware it could appeal to them. After Jules went on sale in June 2015, he said the company quickly realized that teenagers were in fact using them because they posted images of themselves vaping Jules on social media. The former manager said the company was careful to make sure the models in its original campaign were at least 21, but it wasn't until late 2016 or January 2017 that the company said it decided the models in all Jewel ads should be over 35, to better align with the mission of focusing on adult smokers. Only in June of this year did the company again change its policy, this time to use only real people who had switched from cigarettes to Jewel. The company recently modified the names of its flavors, using cream instead of creme brulee and cucumber instead of cool cucumber. Jewel said it heard the criticism that teenagers might be attracted to the flavors, and responded by simplifying the names and losing the descriptors. From our perspective, this is not about getting adults to stop smoking, the Massachusetts Attorney General Mara Healy said in an interview. This is about getting kids to start vaping and make money and have them as customers for life. As part of the FDA investigation, the makers of Juul have been asked to submit all paperwork relevant to these ad campaigns. Obviously, this has led to a lot of bad press surrounding Juul and its products. To combat this, the company announced it will take additional decisive action by actively supporting state and federal initiatives to raise the minimum age to 21 to purchase tobacco products, as part of an initial investment of $30 million over the next three years dedicated to independent research, youth and parent education, and community engagement efforts. Our company's mission is to eliminate cigarettes and help the more than 1 billion smokers worldwide switch to a better alternative, said Juul Labs Chief Executive Officer Kevin Burns. We are already seeing success success in our efforts to enable adult smokers to transition away from cigarettes, and believe our products have the potential over the long term to contribute meaningfully to public health in the U.S. and around the world. At the same time, we are committed to deterring young people as well as adults who do not currently smoke from using our products. We cannot be more emphatic on this point. No young person or non-nicotine user should ever try Juul. Whether this method is effective still remains to be seen. If Juul wants to stay in the market much longer, they'll need to make some pretty serious changes. After it became clear that a disturbing number of teens were using Juul products, authorities tried to better understand the problem. They were horrified as one thing became clear. Many teens don't seem to understand the potential harms of these devices. An April study published in BMJ's Tobacco Control Journal suggests many young people know about Juul, though they aren't aware of its potential harms. In the survey of youth ages 15 to 24, a quarter recognized Juul, and 10% reported both recognizing and trying the device. Alarmingly, most respondents were not aware that Juul pods always contain nicotine. The actual true science behind Juul and the concentrate and how the nicotine is derived? That's not common knowledge to students, an official said. And I think that's the work we have to do with our students and families. When we've intervened and had meetings with parents, they're even confused as to what's in the product. They wonder if there's even nicotine in it. Their kids just tell them it's flavored oil. The fact that students don't know they are smoking an analog of traditional cigarettes means they are not equipped to make the serious decisions that will affect them for the rest of their lives. Because the Juul is brand new on the market, one of the scariest things is the total lack of research on its long-term effects. According to the Juul website, one Juul pod is equivalent to about one pack of cigarettes, or 200 puffs. More than what's in a typical e-cigarette, says Catherine Schaff, MD, a specialist in pulmonary medicine at Geisinger Medical Center in Danville, Pennsylvania. It's pretty concerning, according to Schaff. Long-term use of the Juul may also have lasting effects on heart health. As a cardiologist, I'm worried about someone who uses nicotine for a long time. Nicotine increases adrenaline levels. Sustained adrenaline levels increase the risk for a heart attack, Middlecoff says. Admittedly, there are toxic ingredients found in cigarettes that are not present in Juul pods. Among them are tar, plexiglass, and arsenic. However, it's unclear how glycerol, propylene glycol, benzoic acid, and numerous flavorings affect the human body once they're consumed every day over a long period of time. On top of several European countries, Israel became the latest country to ban Juul entirely, citing public health concerns given their nicotine content. A statement by Israel's health ministry said the Juul device was banned because it contains nicotine at a concentration higher than 20 mg per milliliter and poses a grave risk to public health. In a statement Tuesday, Juul Labs Incorporated said it was incredibly disappointed with what it called a misguided decision by the Israeli government. The San Francisco company said it planned to appeal the ban, adding that its devices provide smokers a true alternative to combustible cigarettes. Juul announced it has spent the past two weeks collecting its 5% pods from retailers in Israel and replacing them with 1.7% pods to adhere to the ban. The company is already offering the reduced nicotine pods in the UK, where it has to comply with European regulation. But in the US and in its newest market, Canada, the company sells the full nicotine version. The Israeli move was consistent with similar restrictions in Europe. Though the pods are not illegal in the EU, they are heavily regulated. Under the new rules, electronic cigarette advertising will be banned in Europe. The products will have to be childproof, the packages will require safety warnings, and they will be limited to 20 milligrams of nicotine. 
While jewels may seem appealing with their sleek design, small size, and variety of flavors, the harsh reality is that jewels are bad for both people and the environment. Jewels contain materials destructive to the environment, including plastics, batteries, and toxic chemicals. As people throw their used jewel pods in the trash or on the ground, they contribute to the amount of pollution that already exists. Professor of Marine Science and Biology Shannon Gowen said that there is a misconception circulating that jewel pods are microplastics. The jewel pods, as I understand them, are not technically microplastics because they're bigger than the fingernail size, Gowen says. With that said, there's still plastic going out to the marine environment. The groundwater and soil can all be adversely affected by the materials within the jewel. One of the big concerns is, of course, the plastic pollution that's coming from the e-cigarettes, Gowen said. But additionally, in conjunction with that, you have the batteries that are involved with that, all the chemicals involved with the battery. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to properly dispose of jewel electronic cigarettes at this time. Gowen suggested that these e-cigarettes be disposed of like old computers or cell phones, because they're considered to be electronic waste. Following a huge crackdown by the FDA, Juul's manufacturer said it stopped selling its fruit-flavored nicotine pods to stores and shut down its US-based Facebook and Instagram accounts. The move, which was announced Tuesday by Juul Chief Executive Officer Kevin Burns, follows a campaign from the Food and Drug Administration to curtail underage use of e-cigarettes. On Thursday, an FDA senior official said the agency would restrict sales of many fruity-flavored nicotine cartridges used in vaping devices. The curb is expected to cut Juul's in-store retail sales by 45%, according to a person familiar with Juul's sales projections. Juul said it will no longer take orders from retailers. However, stores may continue to sell their remaining stock. Juul will also lose more than 77,000 followers on Instagram and almost 11,000 followers on Facebook. Tobacco and menthol-flavored Juuls will still be available in retail stores. The flavors mirror what is currently available for combustible cigarettes. The bottom line is smoking is incredibly dangerous to public health. And unless it makes some serious changes, Juul does not seem like a viable replacement.